Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahia and this week we will talk about the stealth frigates of the Indian Navy. India and Russia have signed two agreements for four stealth frigates. While two Grigorovich class frigates worth 1 billion US dollars will be built and delivered to Indian Navy by 2023, the other two will be built at the Goa Shipyard Limited with material design and specialist assistance from Russia. These two frigates are expected to be delivered to Indian Navy by 2027. Indian Navy currently has six such stealth frigates, three Talwar class and three Take class brought from Russia. The four new warships will be powered by M90FR gas turbine engines built in Ukraine and armed with naval version of BrahMos missile system. So what are the various features of these new stealth frigates and how will it give more heft to the Indian Navy? For more on this, we join by a distinguished panel of guests today. Let me start by introducing them to you, beginning with uh, Commodore Abhijit Singh, Head of uh, Maritime Policy Initiative of ORF. Uh, and we also have with us uh, Vice, Ad Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha as our defense expert. And we have uh, Ajay Banerjee from uh, the Tribune, uh, the defense correspondent. Uh, welcome all of you gentlemen to Rajasabha TV studios. Uh, let me begin with you. Uh, Abhijit, to try and understand, uh, when we talk about uh, stealth frigates, Talwar class, Take class and the new one, it is being said that this is going to be an advanced format as well. What are we looking at here? Look, uh, in tactical warfare, there's uh, a variety of platforms that are needed. You need, uh, of course, aircraft carriers, which we have one. You need uh, frigates, you need destroyers, you need corvettes, you need submarines. Um, we already have a number of uh, frigates in this very class, the Talwar class. So this is going to add on to the existing strength that, that we have. Plus also remember these are, these are stealth frigates and there's also going to be fitted with, as you were mentioning, some, some top end uh, weaponry. Mm -hmm. So I think this is in itself a, a, a very big, a big sort of achievement for us. But I would uh, sort of point out that uh, when it comes to Russia and our dealings with Russia, a lot of the equipment that we get from Russia also has a sort of a, a, a there is an element of balancing mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, in the kind of equipment that we get from Russia. For instance, uh, when uh, it was announced that we are going to get into the LIMOA uh, agreement with the US, and also uh, the fact that we were going to buy the pred pred Predator drones from the US, mm -hmm. right after that we announced that we are going to buy the S-400 from Russia. Uh, similarly, this time there is an announcement that we are going to get MH-60 uh, aircraft from, from, from the US. Yeah, for the Indian Navy. For the Indian Navy, and uh, right on the heels of that there is this announcement that we are going to get stealth, stealth frigates. Now, I'm not trying to make a direct connection, but I'm saying that a lot of what we do with Russia now is uh, just to sort of give a message to the US mm -hmm. that we have other options also if our if things don't work out very well with the US and it seems as if there, there is this Katsa that is uh, so, uh, uh, that is applying some pressure on India mm -hmm. the, the Katsa provisions and uh, we are trying to tell the US that uh, the Russia relationship is going to bail us out of trouble if okay. if US presses us too much, too hard on this okay we'll we'll bring that element as well into the discussion and we'll definitely have uh, the views from uh, uh, Edmund and I as well but uh, uh, sticking to the frigates part, Admiral Sina, uh, as the as the uh, you know uh, end user from the end user's perspective, uh, how would you place uh, uh, these uh, warships as far as uh, Indian Navy's requirement and uh, their characteristics and features are concerned? Uh, you know, there's uh, these are very powerful frigates. The weapon systems and the systems of uh, anti-submarine surface warfare is fairly modern. That's number one. Uh, they are not very heavy. They are just about 4,000 tons. But what is important, uh, Vishal, is that uh, you know, now we are opening uh, another frigate uh, assembly and construction line in a different yard. Uh, you would know that uh, the Goa shipyard hasn't made any frigate uh, so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but now they are graduating. Obviously, it possibly it hints at you know, uh, making little pressure on the MDL and meeting the timelines very, very quickly. So I would say that it is, uh, you know, they will not create infrastructure just for two frigates. My sense is that possibly with time, uh, they will have little more frigates coming out from that uh, yard. Once, you know, your infrastructure is put, it will keep going. But as far as the capability is concerned, they are very capable weapon platforms. Okay. Uh, Ajay? Uh, in terms of uh, the capability and as well as uh, looking at the fact that, uh, as uh, Admiral Sina was pointing out, it's not only for two, it looks like uh, maybe in the future when we have the infrastructure, we might be building more as well. Yeah, goes without saying that we'll be building more of these. Uh, see, Vishal, it is very important to understand firstly 
that uh, such a frigate of this size, of this, uh, this kind of weaponry has already been inducted in the Indian Navy by the name of the Shivali class. The Shivali class is also a stealth frigate, a bit bigger than this one. And we have already made it in 2010. And I will uh, mm -hmm. go with what uh, Commodore Abhijit has pointed out, that today our dealings with Russia are largely hinging upon a balancing act between the US and the Russians. Because uh, to a common perspective, it will be difficult to understand that we can make a, such a frigate on our own. Already we have made them. Mm -hmm. So why are we getting into a tie-up with Russia? So without saying many things, I would believe that this is part of a larger deal with the Russians. These two frigates uh, we are already making, these I repeat. So uh, part of a larger deal which probably may not be in public domain as yet. Okay. Uh, Admiral Sina, uh, what are the specific requirements which we are trying to fulfill? Uh, there are two, two very big requirements. One is that... Uh, we have an um, airborne element and we have a surface navy and subsurface navy elements. As far as the air elements are concerned, you would see that the maritime patrol aircraft has been bought from the Americans. And now this uh, MH-60R, which Abhijit mentioned about. Uh, now, these are not something new. This MH-60R has been spoken about since 1995. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the governments in power, you know, they have different perception of different countries. And like I'll go with uh, uh, Ajay, that, you know, the, it depends on many equations which is not in the public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous government was not very happy to, uh, you know, go along with the American equipment. They had little more closeness with the uh, Russians. But the same government also cleared the artillery guns, MH777 at that time, at least the AON. Mm -hmm. The same government also gave the uh, PHI. So uh, I think while big balancing is right, but I think India is trying to gain by whichever technology these two countries are more advanced in, in our knowledge. Okay. And wherever we have a legacy uh, of lesser surface and ships and the submarines, we have legacy of, uh, of the Russian items. Okay. So it, it makes sense that you go developing on those. Okay. Wherever we are completely on import and we haven't started manufacturing, it is best to try, try out the Western technology and see if you can bring the technology to be manufactured in India at a later date. Okay. So it, it's very clearly that, you know, the airborne platforms, if you see, they are by and large of the Western origin, now American straightforward, earlier it was British, because we didn't have access to the American technology, now we have access to American technology. Uh, Abhijit? Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, Admiral Sinha mentioned something very interesting about the fact that a lot of these uh, platforms that we have with us are legacy platforms. I'd like to take that argument a little, a little bit further and also say that the relationship with Russia now is actually a legacy relationship. We had a close relationship with the USSR, the Soviet Union, and we have sort of taken it forward. But you know, there's good things about a legacy relationship and there are bad things. The good thing is that you always have a safety net. There's always something to fall back upon if things don't work out for you. But the bad thing about a legacy relationship is that there is an extractive element, an element of exploitation. And I would say that when it comes to Russian equipment, it is rugged equipment, it is stu st it's sturdy equipment, but it's not really the best equipment in the market. And mm -hmm. sometimes we simply go to Russia because one, issues of balancing. Second, because we have no other option, there's no other country in the world that is prepared to give us that equipment. And therefore, we, go to, we, we have no choice but to, uh, but to go to Russia, which mm. does not change the fact that, uh, that uh, the, the, we could have done with, with better equipment, uh, more competitive equipment. And uh, I, I believe the Indian Navy's first choice now these days is actually looking at Western platforms. Okay. And if we can get Western platforms, that is good, but in areas that we can't get, and I don't think the Americans have ever given us something, something like this, not the submarines, not, not a frigate of this kind. We simply have no option but to look at Russia. Okay, Ajay, uh, when you talk about legacy uh, uh, issues uh, and uh, striking that balance between our relationship with uh, these two uh, big suppliers. Goes without saying, see, Vishal, first we must see the numbers, the data of the SIPRI, that is the it collates all data of weapon purchases, Russia remains our largest supplier. Something like 69% of all weapon equipment come from Russia. Secondly, uh, please understand, uh, in the global market, uh, America has time and again threatened us, with, especially with Katsa, which happened recently when we were talking about the S-400 uh, air defense missile. And Mr. Modi's government did a very good thing to tell Americans that our relationship with the Russians is a standalone relationship. It is not hinges upon each other. They are independent of each other. And if I remember correctly, even then we had a program on the same channel and over there also I said the same thing, and Vishal, I shall repeat, that the relationship between India and Russia cannot be easily compared to the Indian and U.S. relationship. It's a legacy relationship. 
we run a lot of Russian items and please understand, nobody has given you a nuclear submarine. Nobody gives you that kind of technology. You are mm -hmm. operating the second of the Russian nuclear uh, submarines, the Chakra. We had one in the 1980s and one now. And secondly, importantly, uh, when we talk of naval warships, large number of our ships are of uh, not, I wouldn't say Russian parentage, but kind of a Russian inspired kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And when we talk of the steel, the steel for the warship is very important because of salinity of the the sea. The steel has been now gets made in the Steel Authority of India Limited in the past eight ten years is made here, but before that it used to be important from Russia. And uh, of course there are pitfalls of such a relationship that Russia knows that India is its uh, captive buyer as the data of the CIPRI also indicates. Sixty nine percent of all our equipment comes from Russia, which includes all the three forces and various types of equipment. Uh, we shall. In the longer run, it is, it is good that we have become, the Navy especially has become uh, independent. It is producing its own warships, makes its own mm -hmm. things. But I think it will take under a decade more for us to be self-competent in aviation. At least a decade more. Naval aviation is very complex business. Okay. It is not a simple aviation business. It is a very, very complex business. A helicopter or a fighter jet to land on a ship deck is a very complex technology. But, but we are at, we least, are, at least on the, on the way to that. We are on the way to that, but it is, we are far behind. But on the naval warship front, we have done a very good job. On the submarines, as you know, we have made the Arihant. And we are also making very good equipment on the naval warships. Mm -hmm. Like the Brahmos is ours, the LR Sam, now the, uh, say at least part of the technology is ours. Uh, but again, it will take some time, Vishal, at least a decade for the naval aviation part. Admiral Sena, do you agree with uh, Mr. B Mr. Benerji out here? We are on the way, but it's going to take that much time. I agree with you. And just to supplement what Ajay said, uh, it is not only our relation with Russia. I think you must grant this to this present government in power, Mr. Modi's government, that this project that we are talking about, it would not have succeeded but for our good relations with Ukraine. Because the engine fitted here is Zarya, the... In, uh, is manufactured in Ukraine. Yeah, it's called the uh, Nashprok the shipyard. Mm -hmm. Now, Nashprok makes the Zarya engine. Now, it was stuck since 2016. I went to commission one of the ships in 2013 in Kaliningrad. And since then, these two ships were being talked about. And I saw that half-built ship there. Crimea had been taken over by, by Russia. And the, uh, you know, the diplomatic relations had gone. And therefore, this was not able to be contracted. But now the engines have been given. Ukraine has said, if India is buying, I'll give it. So it is not only with Russia, but the older Soviet Union countries which have broken up. Some have good relations with Russia. Some may not have as good a relation okay. with Russia. But India's relation with all these countries is very good. Okay. And, and 100 marks to Mr. Modi's government that they have managed to persuade and the engines will come here and they will be fitted here. Okay. So uh, I think there is a, there is a, there is a, there is, there is a, you know, a lot of merit in this. Okay. Uh, Abhijit, if we, if we move on to the uh, other, other aspect of it and something which is pointed out by Ajay as well. When we look at the longer uh, vision, you know, and a long-term perspective, as Ajay was pointing out, in terms of uh, naval aviation, you just started. But in terms of building warships and building, uh, uh, you know, uh, frigates and uh, other such naval platforms, uh, we have made a lot of progress. We have made progress so far. But, you know, I mean, uh, the issue really when you're discussing Russian equipment is also about what is Russia's strategy. It's not as if we need the equipment, so Russia just gives us the equipment. Russia surely has a strategy mm -hmm. uh, because of which it is getting so heavily involved in the affairs of the Indian Ocean region, reaching, doing much more with India as also other countries in Asia. And I believe the Russian actually strategy is to be actually an Indo-Pacific power now. And so what the Russians are trying to do is that they have so far uh, had a hold on the Eurasian, sub, uh, Eurasian continent. Mm -hmm. But now they realize that the real big political games are being played in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific. And they simply have to have some kind of material presence in these waters. So uh, bear in mind that India is not the only country that Russia is reaching out to. Russia is reaching out to Vietnam, it's reaching out to Myanmar, as also Pakistan, the mm -hmm. Pakistani uh, Vice Chief of Naval Staff was in Petersburg, St. Petersburg recently. Apparently, the Russians and the Pakistanis are thinking of doing some joint pro projects together. And the Russians are talking about the Indian Ocean, not as the Indian Ocean. You're very surprised. They're actually calling it the Afro-Bengal region. Mm -hmm. The Afro-Bengal uh, uh, Ocean. And their emphasis is on the countries of Africa, with which they do a lot of oil trade as also the Bay of Bengal, Myanmar, Vietnam, etc., where they have some... Uh, so they're looking at it from their they're perspective. They're looking at it from their perspective. So I think if we would 
perhaps uh, be, uh, be mistaken to believe that the Russians are simply giving us the equipment because we are an old friend. That mm -hmm. is not Russia's strategy. Mm -hmm. The Russian strategy actually is to balance between India and Pakistan here, to be a player in the geopolitics of this region, but ensure that, that they can support their friend China, which is another a complicating factor in this relationship with, that okay. we have with Russia, that China is a very close uh, ally of, uh, of Russia, and also have some kind of presence in the Pacific because there's games being played in the, in the South China Sea, and the Russians don't want to be left out. So I would say that let's not just focus on the tactical details, the, the technicalities of this deal. With Russia, when you're dealing, Russia is the quintessential realist power. You have to consider Russian objectives in getting involved in this whole thing and, and, and then play your, uh, uh, make your moves in the region. Okay. Uh, Ajay, that's uh, quite an interesting perspective brought out by Abhijit uh, because Russia's interest out here in the region and uh, its geopolitical interests as well play an important role as per him. Yeah, it has actually. Russia since the 1950s has been trying through Iran and Pakistan and to India the warm water ports of the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean. They have been trying since the 50s. But again, as uh, the Indo-Pacific powers, China and America play out a game differently, Russia has we as to buttress what Commander Abhijit has pointed out. Uh, Russia has provided submarines to Vietnam and Indians trained those Vietnamese submariners. So R Russia is also providing some equipment to Vietnam, to Malaysia and other countries. Malaysia al already flies the uh, Sukhoi. And uh, Russia's interest in these regions will continue because of the trade. Uh, trade not with us, with other countries also. Pakistan is a new entrant to the game with Russians, but I think they are just trying to balance out, as the uh, commander pointed out. But uh, we have nothing to, I don't think so, we have something to compare ourselves with Pakistan because Pakistan is just a small little player in this entire business. Mm -hmm. Russia, China, America and possibly India are the four big players in this. Pakistan is a small entrant in this, mm -hmm. so probably a quintessential element there, but not a very important element, I would say that. Okay, uh, Admiral Sena, uh, uh, Commander Abhijit mentioned the Chinese angle as well and, and the point that Russia and China are on good terms with each other. So how do you see this entire thing playing out? I think uh, uh, quite rightly what Abhijit said. Uh, I look at it from a, a little more sort of angle and that angle is that Russia being with India in the, in the Indo-Pacific or Afro-Bengal as the new name suggests, uh, I think it is helpful to India. India's membership to SCO uh, has been largely been facilitated by, by the Russians. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think that the Russians want to uh, be not be a direct sort of presence, but a pseudo presence by having their equipment and platforms operating here and some kind of dependence. And the reason that the you know, Indians have been taken on board SCO, that Russia is trying to remind them that, look, in the older times, you have had a continental, uh, you know, you have stopped looking at continent. It's all right. China is not your friend. Pakistan is not your friend. But there's mm -hmm. something beyond that. And I'm here to give you a hand. Okay. So, therefore, I think that there is a wider uh, strategic sort of meaning to this. Uh, but I don't foresee China, sort of Russia, uh, directly getting involved. But certainly, they will be involved through these... Uh, you know, friendship and those kind of models. Okay, Commander Abhijit, you want to respond to that? I, I just wanted to make one point which you might find interesting, which is that if you look at the Russian model in mm -hmm. which they, they, they supply this equipment, so our experience has been that getting Russian equipment is not hard. But maintaining Russian equipment is extremely hard because once you try and get into the maintenance aspect of things, you find that the Russians are not actually giving you the space that you require. Mm -hmm. What happens is that they tie you down into a, into a kind of a forced relationship in which you can't look at any other partner but Russia. Which is why it's important to understand that Russia is great to go to when you have no other options. But once you're with the Russians, there's no way out of it. Okay. Uh, so there's good things being with Russia and there's equally bad things also. And as, as you pointed out earlier as well. Let's, let's bring in Ajay again and let's go back to the uh, stealth frigate issue. And uh, as for the perspective plan, uh, Ajay, uh, you know, planning, uh, it, it is being said that uh, Indian Navy requires at least 24 such platforms. Uh, we're being uh, said to have 10 of such, uh, uh, you know, frigates or uh, uh, stealth warships. Uh, how do you see us uh, bridging that divide? Uh, we'll be having these four maybe in a couple of uh, a uh, few next years, one coming in by around 2023, and these two which are being manufactured in India should be with the Indian Navy by around 2027, 2028, uh, if we stick to the timeline. Vishal, uh, I'll answer it in two parts. Firstly, see, please understand there are around 40-odd ships, 45-odd ships under construction in various shipyards in India. And there are various types, which includes uh, anti-submarine warfare, which includes frigates, and also destroyers, which are coming up now, the 17A, Project 17A. Uh, why do we need these? This is very important. Because in the past one decade, Indian Navy has decided 
or the government of India has decided that we will be a blue water navy. Now, what is a blue water navy? Blue water navy needs a presence in to operate far away from your own land. For this, you need a multiple of platforms. You need a fleet tanker which will provide oil to that ship, mm -hmm. water to that ship. You need bases elsewhere. Today, we have bases somewhere in in the Middle East, in Africa. I'll not take the names, and also in the eastern side. But again, uh, please understand why do we need this? Because we want to operate in a in an area which is much bigger. Today, our operations, continuous operations, spread from Gulf of Aden, where we are doing anti-piracy operations, right up to the states of Malacca and all the choke points which make entry into Indian Ocean. Our naval warships are patrolling 24-7. Mm -hmm. Now, this needs manpower, this needs ships, this, and please, a ship cannot keep be sailing. A ship can keep on sailing, but the boys need rest. They have to come back after four months, five months, six months. So, they need rest. They are human beings. So, you need a fresh crew out there. Mm -hmm. So, all this takes time, money, training. So that, that, that explains the that, larger number of uh, that, that uh, platforms the numbers we need. Uh, but, uh, Come on, Abhijit. Just one, I mean, uh, Ajay makes an excellent point. But the issue with Russia sometimes also is, I mean, I'm not, I'm not being critical of Russia, I'm also saying this, that the price of the equipment that Russia gives you is quite attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we go to Russia because we get this equipment at really, really cheap and attractive prices. We wouldn't get this kind of uh, equipment from any other country at the price that Russia is offering it to us. Mm -hmm. But once we get the equipment, then uh, how we maintain the equipment is our outlook. Okay. Uh, because the Russians I, uh, are not, don't sort of have any, uh, uh, any concept of life, cy uh, life cycle maintenance. It's not like they're going to be with you and with that equipment, repair the equipment mm -hmm. and, and keep the platform healthy and running for, for the duration of its life. Okay. So I'm saying that when we jump into these deals with Russia, we should keep this aspect in mind. Okay. Uh, Admiral Sina, as far as long-term perspective is concerned. See, for the long-term perspective, I think Ajay has mentioned that uh, as, as you see that, you know, the geopolitics in the Indian Ocean has changed, uh, changed quite drastically. Uh, Navy was always ahead of the, of the other countries in this area. It's still ahead. But now the new elephant in the Indian Ocean is the, is the China. So, uh, you know, we have, to, we have to enlarge the envelope in which we could exercise little more strategic maneuvering mm -hmm. and for that you required to go to those choke points and you got to have the maritime domain awareness what what is mda mda is picked up by the ships mm -hmm. submarines by aircraft the friends exchange of data so uh, you know for that you have to have a much wider envelope in which you operate and you will require larger number of platforms straightforward apart from that russian uh, perspective uh, Kamana Abhijit, uh, last word from you on on that long term perspective which was being pointed out by ajay as well and looking the china taking the china angle as well into consideration expanding our uh, capabilities uh, uh, which way uh, are we moving and, and uh, how far uh, before we go ahead and uh, maybe, you know, outdo China or uh, catch up with them? You know, there's one thing that the three of us have touched on uh, in part during this conversation that we, that we have, which is the, the need to have the, uh, the equipment through which you can maintain some kind of predominance in your, uh, in your area of influence, mm -hmm. which for us is the Indian Ocean region. I believe a critical deficit in the Indian Ocean region is ASW, anti-submarine warfare the Admiral had just mentioned. Uh, and I think we are going to continue to ask our partners, you know, US, Russia, and, and uh, France, other countries, to give us the kind of equipment that we have a better idea of where the Chinese submarines are. We can, we can sort of counter the Chinese ingress into the Indian Ocean region. Why this frigate deal is important, I think, because to a, to a degree, mm -hmm. this, this uh, frigate is going to help us with our ASW needs. Uh, and also, I think our focus in the future is going to be on aircraft like MH60, P8Is, uh, and we are going to also be uh, uh, paying a lot of emphasis on getting uh, submarines, both SSNs and SSKs. And there, Russia could be a partner. Uh, you never know with the, with the new uh, P-75 uh -huh. India, Russia has sort of made a proposal. We could go with that. We could go with someone else. But in the future, a lot of our focus is going to be on the fact that China is outdoing us outstripping us in terms of influence in the Indian Ocean region and we will need all the help that we can. A lot of it is going to come from Russia. Okay. Ajay, concluding remarks from you on this. Uh, this program brought out that there are now three lines of being made frigates. The Mazagon Docks Limited in Mumbai, the GRSE in Calcutta and now the Goa shipyard. Mm -hmm. We possibly need one more line to make ships faster, quicker, to beat China because China is churning out a ship like nobody's business. Their speed of construction is, I would say, superb. Even if we match 50% of that, we have arrived. Okay.
So wonderful. As our guests have pointed out, uh, that one step at a time, we are making the moves. And it looks like uh, that uh, Indian Navy is making all those uh, right moves to try and uh, go ahead and augment its uh, capabilities. We'll come back again next week with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.